This is Let's Talk About Magnum P.I., the podcast from fans for fans of Magnum P.I. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hi. the last episode before the show is back. And we are so excited. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure by now everybody has seen the promo. Isn't it glorious? We're just waiting for sneak peeks to come out sometime this week. Uh, yeah, I cannot get over the promo, but we'll talk about we that in a bit. It. Yeah, we'll talk about that on Instagram Live, or we will have talked about that on Instagram Live. Um, yeah, so we figured that since the show is coming back, um, we're going to show you some cool little treats and snacks and drinks that you can make for the show or not if you don't want to. Um, one of them, two of them are originally Hawaiian with a little bit of a twist, um, for reasons that I'll explain to you when we're getting to that. So how about we start? Yeah, let's do it. So first things first, hydration is always important. So let's start with drinks. Let's start with my drink. I have been tasked by us to come up with a drink that's very Thomas Magnum. So, what's the things that we're thinking about Thomas Magnum? He's exotic, he's, you know, living in Hawaii. Obviously, I brought out these glasses. I also figured that we'd use Rosella hibiscus. These are dried Rosella hibiscus, so I just tossed two of them in. I got a little bit of pineapple juice. Kiss. Hawaii. Obviously. Obviously, yeah. I'm tossing that to the hibiscus. They should rehydrate relatively fast. And then look pretty badass in the, uh, down in there. Which you can't really see due, due to the very floral print. Then lilikoi syrup. Lilikoi is actually the Hawaiian name for passion fruit. That's how weird that is. Just a little bit. And, of course, what would Thomas Magnum be without the Detroit Tiger? So, for the color, I have Curacao Blue. Alcohol-free, because I'm not making any alcohol here. Because I'm not nope. drinking any alcohol, and some of you might actually be under age. Neither. So. All virgin. All free for us. So, a little bit of blue in there. And to top it off, 7-Up or Sprite or whatever version you want. This is actually sugar-free 7-Up. Uh, <gasps> oh, shit! Oh, shit! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit much, but it saved itself. Ta-da! Yay! You can actually lift it now. Thomas Magnum for you guys. It's blue. And it tastes freaking delicious. Yeah. And it's got pretty stuff in there. Got my straw. It's fucking exotic as hell. Is this number one? A a number one. Magnum drink. Which I will certainly make for the episode. Because it's freaking awesome. Number two is brought to you by this one, Liz. So I couldn't be in my kitchen because it's still pretty early for me. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to have to sort of more talk you guys through it than actually make it. Because, again, I mean, yeah, it's kind of early for me. But Eve will show you how to do it. Um, (laughs) So basically, we're going to make the classic Shirley Temple because British Higgy. Uh, and we also wanted to throw some red into it. So all you need is grenadine. And like Eve said, 7-Up uh, or Sprite or whatever you have in your country. Um, so unfortunately, like I said, I can't really make it for you, but Eve will show you how to do it. Um, so basically, you pour the grenadine uh, as much as you'd like. Uh, I recommend, I think... It's about an ounce, but I mean, I like it a little bit more flavorful than some people. So 
if you like a little less flavor, uh, then go that way. But it's also, just so you guys know, it's yeah. pomegranate flavor. Um, <laughs> I, when I bought the grenadine, I thought it was cherry flavor, and the woman in the store thought I was crazy. So, <laughs> you pour the grenadine into the glass, and then you take your Sprite 7-Up, whatever variation you have, and you pour that in. And it is that simple. And then you stir it up, and we have Higgy Red Sugar Temple Drink. Very, very easy, and again, alcohol-free. Um, yes. So um, I have to let Eve try that one and show you guys. That version by itself is... I love how they're, like, complementing each other. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome by itself already. <laughs> Blue and red. But I'm yeah. going to add a little bit. I prefer my Shirley Temple with a little bit of ginger ale. So I'm going to mm-hmm. pour that in for myself. Which I think makes it all the better. Yeah, two versions of Shirley uh, Temple. Pick your yeah. poison, as they say. <laughs> but yeah, super <laughs> easy, super delicious, and uh, easy to make. And awesome for you to drink. And if you're like me and you um, avoid the sugary versions, because my grenadine is zero sugar, my lily koi was was zero sugar. The let's not talk about the curacao. <laughs> um, <laughs> the sprite, aka Seven Up, was zero sugar, and the pineapple zero is juice was obviously not zero sugar, but is very natural sugar so we've got that covered so we got drinks for game night and i'm really sad to report that these wonderful hibiscuses have not rehydrated yet but they will eventually mm. eventually <laughs> so let's move on to a very 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 hawaiian i uh, think so yes if you are in Hawaii and are watching movies, there's a popcorn version that you're coming across that's called... I have no idea why that, what that is. Oh, it's just the sick gel that's in there. Okay. Um, you are coming across something called hurricane popcorn. Hurricane popcorn is a very seafood-ish, salty kind of popcorn. Originally from Japanese immigrants. There is usually arari in there, but which is some form of salty crackers, which I couldn't get my hands on. So I'm not having arari in there. Um, what you need is going to be dried nori sheet. <laughs> and black and white sesame seeds. Because it's a little bit on the loud side i'm just gonna do it right here and i already pre-prepared some for you so you're just pouring some sesame seeds in a cup pouring the other kind of sesame in. obviously not with, with the drying pack as i just did <laughs> and you're adding one sheet of nori i'm always adding a little bit of salt then you shred that stuff in some form, so it's all evenly mixed kind of thing. We're trusting you guys, for obvious reasons, because you're awesome, to make your own popcorn. You're going to need your popcorn in a container that has a lid for mixing reasons. You're pouring some of the furikake. That's actually furikake spice mix. Usually there's bonito flakes on there, but... I don't do dried fish flakes. And I don't know if you do it. If you do it, add some bonito flakes there. Seasoning on top of these popcorn. Shake, 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 And we... Shake it a little bit more. Because apparently I didn't do it evenly. And we got some hurricane popcorn without the rice yet. But... I could have actually added a little bit more, but it's nice. It's nice. There you are. Well, 
algaic salty flavor type of thing. Um, I always add a little bit of salt there to to make my furry cake. Furry cake is also awesome for like some meats, for tofu to cover it in, for fake poke or actual poke to cover it in. So you can use it for a lot of things. And these dried version of the furikake lasts you for a couple of months if you keep it dry and not open like I just did. <laughs> so, the next form of popcorn comes from Liz. And this episode is actually going to be really short. But yes, <laughs> it's just to prepare. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, like Eve said, you need your popcorn and whatever popcorn you make, whether you make it in the microwave, whether you make it on a stovetop, air popper, anything like that doesn't really matter as long as it's plain popcorn. Um, so we're going to be making a mint chocolate popcorn, um, again, because super loud and because it's super early for me, um, <laughs> I kind of had to do it beforehand. So basically what you're going to need is you're going to need your plain popcorn. Any form of mint chocolate. I have arrow mint chocolate. Um, but you could use like junior mints or like a dark chocolate mint. Um, and like I said, butter. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the mint chocolate and the butter. Put it in a pot or pan or whatever. I think the recipe says saucepan. Um, by the way, I think we're going to put the recipes up somewhere. Like the links to the recipes. So you guys can... All around me for the food ones. The Shirley Temple, like the Shirley Temple, is pretty obvious, but um, we'll see. We'll see about throwing some links up, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Thomas Magnum was just very, very. However, the fuck I like it to taste, and I like very minimal lily koi, very minimal pineapple, and a lot of sprite. So there's that. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so basically, you're going to take your butter and your chocolate. Uh, and put it in your pan on medium heat on the stove. You're going to melt it together um, so it becomes like a liquidy, really buttery chocolate. Uh, and then all you're going to do is you're going to take that, you're going to drizzle it on top of your plain popcorn in a mixing bowl so that it's evenly covered, kind of like what that is going to look like. I, again, I made a very small amount, but you can make as much as you can. Like. And then it says... <laughs> it does look really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you put it in the fridge for a little bit so that it kind of hardens. And that's, again, the other reason why I had to do it a little bit earlier because it has to be, like, chilled a little bit. And then it ends up looking like that. And then it kind of coats the popcorn. Kind of bad lighting, I'm sorry. But you have <laughs> a mint chocolate coating on your popcorn. Which and is awesome. It. So, yeah. and it tastes really good. The final one is, again, uh, something that you'll find in Hawaii with a huge twist on my part. Because I don't do sugar. <laughs> As some of you might have noticed, I, I only did sugar for some parts of the drinks because, well, some of the syrup is unavoidable sugar. And obviously, fruit juice is unavoidable sugar. And fruit, fruit sugar is a completely different ball game than the other kind of stuff. We're making... Mango mochi. Yay! Or a, a version of mango mochi. So, what you're going to need is, you're going to need sticky rice flour, which I have here. Um, you're, yeah, you're going to need a little bit of water. You're adding that. And a disclaimer, I'm wearing these for cooking all the time, not because of any interesting things, but due to our dear little corona, I have very open hands. I have to sanitize my hands like six times a day. They're open and there's parts of cooking that shouldn't get into the open wounds. So I'm always wearing gloves at the moment. So when you're, you're adding a little bit of water to the sticky rice, and stirring until it's like some form of dough. And this is the simple thing that I'm just making on the go and I'm making on making it on the go all the bloody time. 
Because some of you who already had mochi, you'll know that mochi's fucking amazing. <laughs> it is. I can attest. So it's it's some let's call it some goo. Now the interesting part about this goo is that I'm gonna add some things. Because I'm making a mango mochi, and you can do whatever kind of mochi you want with that. I'm making a mango mochi. I'm adding a little bit of food coloring, in this case, orange. And to make it a little bit sweet, <coughs> I'm, I have some, steve, uh, some liquid stevia over here. Steering it, so the goo remains a nice little, it's actually turning out more red than I expected it to turn out. Oh well. That was with the Shirley Temple color. Yeah. Almost fitting our Higgy drink. I'll add a bit more. Let's make it colorful. And... That food coloring contains a little bit of sugar. So, we're not staying 100% away from the sugar. And it's kind of really hard in the modern society to stay away 100% from sugar. Yeah. I mean, and obviously and the popcorn can't be sugar-free with chocolate. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it can be if you let me make sh chocolate. I mean, if you guys want, I can show you how to make chocolate real quick. Do you want that, Liz? I mean, you, you wouldn't mind. mind. You wouldn't mind. Okay. So we're taking that to... Okay, I should not have put that stuff in front of the microwave. Take it to the microwave. And now you've got to be a little bit of the careful side. I'm doing it for 20 seconds first. Um, and I'm getting stuff for the chocolate. Okay, this is chocolate. And over there... Let me just grab something for the impromptu chocolate making. Because <laughs> you're going to need Plans change, and that's what's so great. <laughs> yeah, plans change. This episode's getting a little bit longer than we expected. So, let's check this. Yes, it's almost the right amount of gooey. Almost. Almost. Like ten seconds more, I think. So, I can prepare this first. You're going to need some form of starch. Or flour, if you really want flour, but it's, it's calling for starch. For where you want to roll them into place. Ah, here we go. This is the right form of gooey. It's like all kinds of sticky. So... Adding to that, I have mango protein powder. I have a little bit of Greek yogurt. That I'm adding in there. Well, it's a little bit much. Again, stevia. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Wow. I have. Oh my god, I'm having that. Popcorn, take it right through. I have some pureed mango from the store. At least it claims to be pureed mango. And I'm just mixing that up in here. So it's a nice little mush for inside the mochi. Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> yeah, this is this is stickier than I expected, but it's gonna be delicious. And that's all that matters. It's all that matters, yes. Because we want some delicious little treats for when we watch season four. Yay! Ah, are you excited, Liz? Uh, I am beyond excited. <laughs> As you well know from my 
screaming voice notes. <laughs> yeah, I got some and my, really interesting screaming voice notes from you. You did, and my gifts on Twitter and all that. Yeah. I made some. I made a gif of the uh, of the promo, which I'm pretty sure is the part that everybody is talking about. <laughs> You mean Ninja um, Higgy going against well, what what we assume is the White Knight? So, yes, that, that my favorite part of the whole promo. This is the wonderful filling. It's going to taste awesome. And now to the cool. Oh goodness! So, just so it's not sticking on me all the time, I'm rolling this around in starch for a little bit, so I can actually do something with it. Yay! So, oh, goodness, no, goodness me, making mochi is a task and a half, let me tell you that. But it's so, all worth it. It's all, all worth it. I just told you, so it doesn't stick on me, and ta-da, it sticks on me. It's so sticking. You're making, it's sticky rice, what did I expect? So you're making, like, this kind of <laughs> thing. You're putting some of the filling in there. Yeah, should be enough. You're closing this thing up. And then you're rolling it around a little bit. So it really is closed. I recommend putting it in some form of cupcake holder after. Just so it can rest and it can, you know, stop being a little bit of a diva. <laughs> And also it can cool down. Because I'm pretty sure none of us want to eat blisteringly hot mochi. No. <laughs> Again, filling and closing. You have to convince that thing a little bit that it's supposed to stay closed. That's a little bit of work. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but you get cool little mochis. Yay! And I apparently made just enough for two. Which is also... Awesome. Oh. Well, not, not filling, but... Let me tell you, like any good cookie dough, you can just eat it like that. <laughs> so, chocolate. Impromptu snack. New chocolate. Because <laughs> who doesn't love some chocolate? Let me actually see if I have... Some cool little... I do. So, here's the thing. I live close to two factory stores of Haribo. So I actually have this amazing Haribo kind of thing. So I'm making chocolate gummy bears right now. I'm prepared <laughs> to always make chocolate. <laughs> Let's be real here. Chocolate is stupidly simple if you think about it. What you need is cocoa butter. Which I always have, obviously. You're adding some cocoa butter to this little... To something. It has to be able to go into the microwave. Let's remove the starch. Um, I'm always going for 30 seconds. And then another 30 seconds if it's needed. You just need to melt that shit. Um, then... Question. Do we want... Milky chocolate, dark chocolate. I'm making it sweet as fuck anyway. But do we want milky chocolate? Milky chocolate. Milky chocolate. Milky chocolate. So I need some form of milk. And since I don't have cow <coughs> milk, I, I'm going to go for almond milk. Perfect. Are you? You're the clean one. So. And that was not enough to melt the cocoa butter. So we're going for another wait. could you stop clinging to that thank you we're going for another 30 seconds it's quite important to check that frequently because some forms of cocoa butter or it, I do it with peanut butter sometimes um, the peanut butter <laughs> burns easily so like in, in the span of 30 seconds you can actually have like a lump of coal in there and we don't want that because we want to actually eat the chocolate That was an interesting change of plans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the best part of it is 
podcast is podcast is you never know what's gonna happen. Exactly, and it's still not done. Oh. As I enjoy my milk. Shirley Temple or Julia chocolate Tegan? popcorn. Oh, I'm jealous. Um, I'm hibiscus. jealous that you can actually have a Shirley Temple. <laughs> My hibiscus is still not rehydrated, so I obviously picked the wrong one. So, here we have it. It just looks like melted butter at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Simpler. Chocolate is stupidly simple. You can actually, you know, use melted butter, use peanut butter. Um, with peanut butter, there is a trick. Um, these kinds of artificial sugar stuff things are helping that thing to clot really fast. So, unsweetened cocoa, just add that. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Stir it. You're matting a little bit more, because I can and I want it. Look at me, I just said I'm adding a little bit more and I just basically went to town with that. <laughs> but again, it's just but who doesn't love a lot of cocoa, so Yeah. I'm also making people happy. So if we want milky chocolate, we're adding a little bit of milk. Which also helps. Uh, since it's it's quite, you know, it's fresh from the fridge, it also helps the chocolate to get a little bit more to the clotting. And we're adding the sweetener because nothing in there is sweet right now. So, sugar-free chocolate coming along. And it still needs more cocoa. <laughs> it's really, really hard to explain when you have to stop with adding cocoa because it's like with pasta. Eventually you learn the consistency it's supposed to have. And I need I need some actual Twirl here because there's a lot of lumps in there. Uh, whisk, not twirl. Sorry. <laughs> so, like, uh, some people keep asking me if, if you're making German Spätzle or pasta, what's the consistency you have to look for? And I keep being unable to tell them because you just know. It's really just something you learn, yeah. Yeah, I learned making pasta and spätzle from a really young age, and I have no idea how to tell you. It's like, you stop doing it at the perfect pasta consistency. And, well, it's hard to explain what the perfect <laughs> pasta consistency is. Mm, it's pretty nice. Looks delicious. Mm-hmm. That means you can act actually, and I'm going to do that now. I've got some vanilla paste. Adding some vanilla paste for taste. Some, she says, and pours like half of the thing in. <laughs> but again, who doesn't love vanilla? Yeah, true. And because I'm a weirdo, I'm going to add a little bit, a little spritz of lemon in there. Because I always love the freshness that the lemon gives that thing. It's just extra fresh taste. And then you're just adding your chocolate to whatever thing you want. In my case, I want gummy bear chocolate and stars. I'm using my Haribo mold. Uh, 
adding that, and then this entire thing gets to go into the fridge. Yay! And then you have chocolate, and I actually have more chocolate than I have mold. So, cocoa mold. <laughs> cocoa bottle mold. If you ever have ha had Harry Bow, you, you know what they look like. <laughs> Not cocoa, coke bottle mold. Good lord. <laughs> English is hard after seeing, you know, that thing. <laughs> and we're so close to the sneak peeks now. I know. And I just, uh, I just know I'm going to be at work when they come out. Oh, of course you are, and so will I. Because they, well, you might actually be still asleep. Well, lately CBS has been releasing stuff as I've been asleep, or like right before I go to bed. Yeah. So yeah it's not what they normally do, so. Yeah. And if you've got some stuff left in there, just eat that. <laughs> By the way, my mochi is now ready. Ish. Mm. I should go back to the fridge too. Ugh. Holy fuck, I have a huge ass fridge and everything is sticking to the floor of it because my food's doing weird stuff. So, the mochi is cold down and I'm going to bite into it now. Mm. Yay! I'm so jealous. <laughs> Yummy! And it's not overly sweet. But really good. That's it! We have two awesome drinks, two versions of popcorn, we have mochi, and impromptu chocolate for you guys. Which should get you through premiere night, no problems. <laughs> <laughs> and other nights, if you want chocolate. Yes. <laughs> and all of that. So, um, we'll maybe do this again. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm, tink I'm tinkering on a Melisada recipe. Yes, which I'm very excited for her to share with me when we. Yes. Get when it's finally when actually. When it's finally actually working. Because right oh, now, yeah, Sada is doing stuff that's completely and entirely unexpected. <laughs> so yeah, that was it. Pre-gaming for the show. And don't Which forget... we're so close to. Oh my god. So fucking close. I'm so excited. Me too. I gotta say, out of the two of them, I actually kind of prefer Thomas. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then again, I really love you guys the Lilacoy. You have to let us know. You yeah, have to you let guys, us know what you guys if you think. Make, <laughs> if you make some of that, let us know and let us see. Ciao! See you guys next time! Which will be after 401. Woo!